Welcome back to Stories of Being. I'm Ingrid and each week I sit down with individuals who are changing the way we relate to ourselves, each other and our planet. In this week's episode, I talk to Felicia Sokol. Felicia is an experienced birth and postpartum doula, childbirth educator and myosin therapist. I've known Felicia for many, many years and did her online birth ed course before the birth of my first child. And the wisdom and knowledge that she shared really changed my perspective on birth and also what I was capable of in that process. There was so much about my own physiology, my hormones and the actual process of birth that I literally had no idea about and was actually pretty kind of embarrassed myself about how much I didn't know. In this episode, we talk about birth, but we also talk about so much more than that. We talk about the power of the feminine, letting go of dogma, moving away from this warlike mentality we see in the world, and also detaching from the identities and roles we often give ourselves. I really want to be very clear that when we're discussing birth, it's not about one type of birth being better than the other or there's one right way to birth or that hospitals and medical intervention are bad. Absolutely not. They are so necessary sometimes and can be absolutely life-saving. It's more so about women being given the opportunity to feel powerful, to feel heard and also to feel supported in their experience of birth whatever that experience looks like. Felicia has some amazing free resources available um, around birth, so I'll link to those and also to all of her other info in the show notes. I really hope... I really hope you enjoy this episode and my chat with Felicia. So the work that you do as a birth doula means that you kind of work with women in one of their most powerful moments. And I'm super curious to hear from you almost what you've learned about women in the work that you do and kind of the power that that they can hold. Mm. Yeah, I think that's key when you say that they can hold and not necessarily always do or sometimes do more than you would have ever expected. I mean, when I'm present, no matter no matter what's going on, I never see a woman I can see a woman going through like obstacles in herself, but I never see I don't ever go, "Oh my gosh, she's weak." Like I never see that, you know, no matter what. But I think just as a whole like when you zoom out, like not in my personal experience, but when you zoom out to like birth and women, mm-hmm. especially now, more in the Western world, I'm not so, I don't know about other cultures. I think it's probably different around the world, but I'm more attuned to like European, American, like this more Western world, which has a very different mentality than some other parts of the of the world. So I can't speak for all women of the world, but I'd say definitely within this like sort of Western mentality, I think kind of the conclusion that I've come to is that it's only like, we can't change the system we can't like from the inside, we can't go in and like march with like our and be like, this is so, I mean, we can, and we do. And being like, this is fucked up. Like, why are you putting women in these positions? Why are you coercing them? Why are you doing all this stuff? But at the end of the day, I think what I've learned is that the only people who have the key to solve that problem is the women first. And then everything else follows because if women, if they can take responsibility individually, whatever that means will look different for every single person. It will always look different. It doesn't mean, oh, you do a home birth or you do a... It it doesn't have those labels. But if each woman takes self-responsibility for her own birth, then things will naturally change because there will be no demand for birth to be in a place or in a way that is not self-responsible anymore because women have... Like, they've already... They, they're the ones giving birth. No one else, the system isn't giving birth. The government's not getting, no one's giving birth except the women. So like if they can change the way that they approach it, starting from an individual level, then we can work our way out rather than, I, I don't have this like deep need to like change the system from the inside and all, like I'll criticize it openly for sure. But I, 
I don't feel like the need to go and like yell at doctors or get angry. I don't want to waste my energy on that. I'd rather, and this is, I think where my role comes as a doula is I would rather just work with people one-on-one, Yeah, you know, and yeah. just see where they're at. And like every person is unique, like their own kind of sovereign self-responsible state is going to be different than the next person's. And it's also not for me to know exactly what that is. I, I just kind of urge them to come to that point, yes. you know? Yeah. Yeah. So it is, it's that they, they can hold the power and they can have the power, but they don't always, their path to that is not always on the first try yes. or the first birth that they find that. Yeah. Some, yes. And do you think that's because they don't know that they can or they're not encouraged to kind of like find that within themselves? Why do you think that? currently isn't like that and that it can take you know a birth or two or whatever or yeah. when that happens you know for a woman to, to find that within herself I think it's it's becoming less common I think well at least in my world it's becoming more common that I see on their first pregnant or their first full-term pregnancy their first baby that they are taking more uh, mm-hmm. initiative to have the experience that they desire and to really uh, hone in on what that is. But often, at least in the past, well, this is my perception that it would often take like a traumatic experience where they walked into it just assuming everything would be fine. And then they had a traumatic exper- experience. And then the next birth, they got it. You know, they're like, okay, I need this and this and this. And so it's like, well, how do we, you shouldn't have to have a traumatic experience to then have an impact. Like, let's skip that part. Let's yeah. come from like the, the, empowering place like before and I think that's a cultural thing I think we're not and this is hopefully where like anybody in any kind of women uh, women are the only ones who are going to make this happen it's not men like if we can change the culture around how we raise our daughters around what's Mm -hmm. normal to talk about period menstruation all this stuff if we can start there and also like be culturally exposed to pregnancy and birth you have like especially in the western world there's no you find in like southeast asia and certain cultures they actually have a much better understanding of like the postpartum period and the the mother is witnessed through her experience like she has the birth and then she comes back and like that bubble of postpartum is really held by the community and by families and by everyone and we don't have that it's like you gave birth you go into a box like you take a few weeks off, nobody sees you, nobody knows what you're going through, nobody talks about it, and they think the baby's really cute, but nothing, nobody witnesses the mother in any way. And I think that's that the kind of like sick side of the Western mentality. Yeah. There's a lot of great things about Western mentality, but like that's the sick part, I think. Yes, and there's within that there's also no recognition that like it's what well, I found anyway, that it's a huge transformation for the woman you know so like it's a huge like from an identity perspective from everything you've gone from not being a mother to being a mother through birth that's happened and that's actually a huge shift and that isn't spoken about or the the weight of that change also isn't discussed you know yeah and I mean you know better than me it's physical it's mental it's spiritual it's emotional it's more than that and like Imagine if we had a culture where there was just a little ritual. We, I mean, the, also kind of the Western world is devoid of ritual in general. But if there was like a little ritual or a little ceremony or something in the community or family, just a little bit, just to acknowledge it, like it could be so simple. But if that was just normal, then I, then you would also have the young girls around that where they've been introduced to birth. And it's not this thing that all they know is in movies where someone yeah. screams or their mom was like, oh, I, I don't. Yeah, you gave, I gave birth. Maybe they have a birth story. Their mom didn't like it. They did like it. Yes. And, you know, nothing around menstruation, nothing around these, like, kind of cyclical uh, milestones of being a woman. Menopause, nobody recognizes that. So yes. women just go through these, like, massive changes, but there's no cultural recognition around it or community recognition around it. Mm-hmm. And I actually think it that's probably a place where we could start because if we had that then women would be coming up to their first pregnancy or their first full-term pregnancy or whatever coming up to it wanting to have a baby and have already been exposed to some like you know had been around it a little bit yes yes that's it 
Yes. And also her different um, stories or, yeah, stories about what it can be, you know, like that it can be an incredible thing and it can be an, a powerful thing. That doesn't mean that it is that every time, but there probably then would be more diversity in the, in the sense of what people think birth can be, you know, rather than something that's scary and painful and you want to get through it and don't want to almost be attached to it. Right. You know, like yeah, actually have an idea about what that then means. Yeah. And I think, I mean, this gets really deep, but I think we have to really confront our, like on a cultural level, we have to really confront our fear of pain and our fear of death. That's a little bit deeper because it's kind of connected. There is sort of a death birth, pro- like they're kind of, you know, twins of like the opposite sides, but like just with pain, it's like when you break your arm, that's painful because you're not supposed to break your bone. There's no like bodily process where that's supposed to happen. It's an accident. Like the body can heal it, but like that's painful because it's not supposed to be that way. You're not supposed to crack your bone, but with birth, even if it's, it is supposed to happen. And that's, we need to under, we need to separate pain that's like out of place and something that we call pain. That's not out of place. That's a, that's a, you know, because if we're always afraid, of, people are associating giving birth, like breaking your bones, you know, <laughs> it's totally ignorant. Yes. Yeah. That's in, I've never thought about that before, but that's interesting. And also like, like if you're giving birth surrounded by people and you have a doula and you have like people there supporting you, that pain then is very, looks very different than like pain with people who maybe aren't necessarily as supportive. So when you have like that support network around you, you can also get through that pain, you know? Yeah. 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 And also like, I like to, I I don't look, I haven't given birth myself. I always tell people like before that I'm like, it will be intense. It could be intensely pleasurable. I've seen that before. It's rare, but like, It can be, it will be intense. It will be an overwhelmingly intense sensation, but it doesn't like you find out what it is for you, you know? And actually a lot of women have told me, they were like, I wouldn't call it pain. I would call it something else, but they're like, I don't have a word for it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they were like, and I think it's uncomfortable a lot. Most of the time it's like an uncomfortable sensation, but I don't know if everyone would call it pain. I think maybe we need a new word. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. You're right. It's just, it's like just crazy intensity. But I think like because your body kind of is, you know, knows what it's doing, meant there's so much other stuff going on with like chemicals and stuff like that, that that also helps the pain intensity of it. It's like perfectly designed. It's like meant, and also like, anything this is also the thing with pain too like if you were to climb mount everest or any high mountain you would go through pain like that's gonna be a painful process people but like if it wasn't painful it wouldn't be this amazing thing that you did it would just be like average right it would just be an average thing oh look you climb the mountain there's nothing like like if that was a if climbing a mountain was in the world, like a very easy thing to do, painless, we wouldn't think it's amazing. Yes. So, you know, and I think we have to kind of understand that sometimes like, I think this can go for like emotional experiences in life too. Like you go through grief or loss or a breakup or a really hard financial moment or whatever it might be, like some sort of like painful moment in life and, and you're able to get through it on the other side. It's not fun while it's happening necessarily some people might have some sense of enlightenment about it but like it's not fun but then when you get you achieve like if you get on the other end of that and you achieved something like deep and like you can't do that without a little bit of pain or or challenge or obstacle like whatever you want to call it so I think you're literally giving birth you're doing the most it's it's kind of it's actually more amazing than climbing a mountain in my opinion even though it happens very naturally so why would it, why are we so upset that it is a painful thing sometimes? Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. And we, you don't actually need to run from that like discomfort and the, which again, um, on like a bigger societal level, so easy not to be, it's very easy to just always be comfortable, you know, like with having food delivered and you can get anything you want in two seconds, like all of that sort of stuff. So yeah. there's, the the being uncomfortable is such a kind of it just doesn't happen and it obviously even more so in birth um yeah it's yeah it's so easy to escape that but like you said that's a, that can be part of this like transformative moment that is birth yeah exactly so it's i think like i think it's it all kind of comes down to this cultural reframing and, you know, I can only do what, like, I can do. You do what you can do with your podcast or however you talk with people. But, like, we just have to start young. Like, we have to start, like, now that we're adults and we have this sort of level of understanding, we can share it with people older than us. I'm sure it will still benefit them. But, like, we, like for me, at least, like, in my path, I, I, really, I really like being around children and young adolescents and stuff. I really remember being like that. And I don't know, I, I don't know how, but if I can somehow bridge my work also into that mm. as well, and it would be really helpful. And also with young boys, too, like, you don't have to get them all obsessed with birth, but, like, also, like, telling – they should also be a part of this conversation, too, because they'll eventually be, like – fathers and they shouldn't be afraid either yeah. like they shouldn't fear birth either so I remember I was when I was doing the I was walking the Camino it was this really random moment and these like bite these guys who were like it was like three young guys they're like 23 to 26 years old I think from Spain or from somewhere in Europe and they were biking across the Camino and we kind of landed at the same spot in an albergue in a um, Camino hostel and they just asked me what do you do you know and I said I'm a birth doula and I know off, often when I tell people that they go what is that and then it becomes a very long conversation you know and I kind of expected that and it wasn't very long they only had like half an hour because they had to like go on but they like literally like intensely talked to me for like those 30 minutes and like I just know I'm like whoever if they end up having children they they like literally had it just from a 30 minute conversation like that seed of like birth is now they were just kind of like oh my god I've never thought of that yeah you know yes. and I think it can be as simple as that just having those little conversations when people are young my mom like I give her so much credit she had a really positive birth experience with me and she used to talk about it all the time mm -hmm. not all the time but like often when it was my birthday she's like oh your birth was so amazing so I always had that in my head that it was cool even yeah. though I was seeing in movies that it wasn't and I I definitely think it affected me yeah. in a positive way yes totally well I guess on that you kind of mentioned it before but like what would you say your path is overall and like how did you how did you get into this space in the sense of being a birth doula yeah so my path as I let my path evolve. Maybe one day I won't even be doing birth work and will evolve into something else, but it, it will be some natural progression. So I definitely feel like everything's very like womb centric for me, yeah. but that can eventually go into sexuality. And also I have a very spiritual side to me that, so it's kind of like, I think as I go on all these kind of like things that interest me will braid together. But as of now, so far it's been birth postpartum well actually before that I always used to nanny and babysit so I always loved babies before and children so that it definitely started there but then it sort of went to like pregnancy birth postpartum and actually now I'm doing um something called meson therapy which is it's consultate it, it's a mix of like my already knowledge of herbs and physiology and all this stuff and um hands it's like a north african abdominal massage mixed with some stuff of physiology and it's for any issue womb related it could be i mean it could also just be self-care but if you're trying to conceive if you're postpartum whether it's positive negative 
if you're menopausal, if you have painful periods, irregular periods, like literally anything. And it's an amazing therapy. It's so amazing. And I feel like now it's sort of like anything womb. So it might not, yeah. there'll be people coming to me who might not be necessarily in the realm of wanting to get pregnant or anything. And it could also be younger people now too. So I just see like everything kind of comes out of the womb for me. And, but also there's things that are like, I think it could be a really spiritual place. It's like, yeah. So that's kind of, I see my path kind of like bl blossoming out of the womb, but it will evolve over time and stuff. And I think, you know, I went a year without going to any births and then I went to a bunch and then I stopped. And then, so it's not like absolutely consistent with like going to births necessarily, yeah. but they come when they're there and then I do this other stuff. So that's kind of where I see it now and how it started. Uh, there's like a few places. My mom had my sister when I was nine years old and it was like my baby. I was like, it was like my pregnancy, my baby. <laughs> like I was basically, I like co-slept with my sister till she was two. I was like my baby. Oh my God. Yeah, like I've been her. My mom was happy. She was actually really happy. She was like, oh great. Like I would, yeah. vol I was like, I volunteer to baby, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> My mom was like, great, you can stay home. Like, my mom would leave me alone with her when I was, like, when she was an infant. Not for a long period of time, when I was, like, yeah. nine. And I would take, I would, I had her. I was like, oh, I'm good, you know? Yeah, that's quite um, special. Yeah, it was really special to be around that. So I was around my mom for that, and I really loved, she used to take me to her, like, scans and stuff. Like, I wanted to go, you know? I felt, like, very involved in her pregnancy. <laughs> yes. Which I think is really cool. It was such a special experience. And then I also, yeah, I, there was at some point where I was like, ooh, I really feel like I'll be a mother. I'm not, but now. But I was like, oh, I really, it kind of hit me like kind of almost like this like spiritual knowing. I was like, I'm going to be a mother at some point. Yeah. And then from there, like literally from that experience of like feeling like that's a real reality, that was where my interests, I was like, oh, I should learn about this. And then it just spiraled out of control. <laughs> yes, amazing. But that's cool because it's then just like unfolded, you know, very naturally. Yeah. And I think at a time where I, cause I, my, I have a background in art and stuff and performance art and um, so like theater and playwriting and I like poetry and music. Like I like all the arts that have some sort of, I also like visual arts, but like, so I think for a while I was more focused on that and I just didn't, I wasn't ready to like help people yet. I was more self-involved to be honest, not saying if you're an artist, you have to be self-involved, but I was more just self-involved at that time. And then, but maybe that will also bridge too. maybe all the art stuff will, will at some point bridge into all this as well. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if it's how it will all kind of come. You can't really, I feel like this kind of work, you can't really like plan a trajectory the way you can with a lot of other stuff. It's like women's work also has like a feminine frame. Like I think in the world, it's a very masculine framework of like, you get a job here and then there's room for growth and then you can maybe go out and then you gain that skill and then you work from this time to that time. And I think that's sort of been the norm. I think our generation's changing that a little bit, but like for women's work, you, don't, you can't, it's not practical. It's like emotional connection to people. Like life has to kind of make it happen too. Yes. Like a little bit of both. Yes, exactly. And it's not like a linear kind of path. What you it's not something you would wake up one day and be like, I think I'm going to be a birth worker. And it sounds like a practical <laughs> thing to do. Yeah. Like it really has to cut it. That comes later. That it thought is. comes later. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Well, you just said, um, about like the masculine framework mm. one of the questions I had written down was like because basically from like I've thought about things a lot differently I think from uh, from giving birth like I think giving birth for me really I think made me realize like my own power much less need for like looking for external validation and like oh you should do this and blah 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 like for me th those two things were a huge thing that I got out of birth and it's also made me think about 
how like society or what society sees as powerful and currently I think what society sees as powerful is much more masculine it's like what you were just saying growth and like behaving in a particular way and doing things this way and not all the time but I would say as a generalization women are then seen as powerful when they behave in that way which is not bad it's not wrong but there's also a different way there's another way to see power which is more kind of feminine you could say Mm -hmm. so I'm curious what you think like about that I guess and what you how you would describe like I guess for lack of a better a diff, like a better phrase like women and power and feminine power or like the alternative to what as to what we see as powerful now yeah i think individuals get to define what powerful is for themselves first and then we sort of then the then society kind of then take shape and decides that like you can't go from the out again it's another place where we we can't go from the outside in and i actually see and again maybe this is just my own personal social media algorithm or whatever but i actually see it quite positive and maybe it's again because of what i'm personally connecting to in the world that i'm connected to but you know i think also because of social media when people get to define things more for themselves now in a way, sometimes they're more uh, groupthink because of like it, there's a positive and negative too. But people are showing themselves. Like imagine in like the 1800s, if you were a, a woman, the only way you're going to have much power, pro- there's slim chance you're going to have any power without marrying into it or having been born into it. Mm-hmm. And you don't, you're not the one bringing in the, it's all through connection, right? So women didn't really have that space to be anything within the man's world besides a mother or a wife. And you, they could be a respected mother or wife back then, but she was of the home and like, Imagine if they had social media in the 1800s, then like they could make it cool. They're like, oh yeah, look at me. Like, look how well I keep the hearth in my home. Like, but that's what women are kind of doing now. Some of them, because the ones who sort of want to get away from this, like boss bitch, there's nothing wrong with it. That's like for, that's totally cool for some women. Like, you know, you you have like the 1950s and everything before repressed kind of housewife. Nobody wants that. And then the seventies, the pendulum swung with feminism, which was like, now let's just be men. Yeah. And then I feel like we're kind of trying to like get back to the middle where it's like, okay, that's cool for some people. Also that might be cool for some people too. And then like, there's this middle ground where like women are like, yeah, I'm maybe like right now my husband or my partner supports me. And I'm mothering my child till they go to school. And like, that's cool. Like I'm doing stuff with them and like, I can, I can share that or I don't have to share that, you know? So I feel like we, there's so much choice now and we get to define for ourselves what that is. And I think slowly women who want to be more in the mothering home role, truly like that is their heart's truth. They're making it powerful and cool Mm. because we're not, being forced anymore like we live in a really free time in my opinion yeah in a way so, like i see actually at it's really positive where like that is really cool like if i just i don't know what i'll feel but like if, if i decide when and if i have children and i have them like i would probably fully want to just be with them for a few years i'm assuming that's what i want maybe i'm wrong yeah. and like that will be powerful for me because that's what i would want and yeah. then And then I can go back, you know, so like, I think the power is now like, we get to kind of define it because we live in this free society now. And there's still I mean, there, I think especially our generation, we still have our parents generation where it was like, we also have to become like a doctor, lawyer, whatever we might be like, we also have to prove ourselves in a man world too. For the most part, unless you come from a more religious background, that's usually how it is. Yeah. And we can't, like, it's something, to me, it's just an option. It's like, yeah, you can. But you know what I do feel, though? I think it's nice 
the, this is, and this is just my personal perspective. I think it's really cool when a woman has some sort of passion, some sort of skill, maybe she's made it into a career, maybe not, but she has something she's really interested in and has given some energy to before she has children that when she has children, whatever she, she'll, because if you don't have that, then your whole identity goes to them. And yeah. I think it's beautiful to give your all to them, but eventually they're going to be adults and you won't really be mom anymore. So what, you know, what do you have? So I, I do think it's really good for women to have all people, not just women, men too, to have something that they're passionate about, interested in, put some energy into just for their own self-esteem that when they have children, maybe they'll forget about that thing for a while, but they always have that to come back to or to build on. And it, again, it doesn't have to be a career, but it could be. Yeah. And like, I think that's really important because that I do see kind of the dark side of all this of women giving their all to their children. And I would do the same. I would give my everything, but I wouldn't want to give my whole identity because at the end of the day, everything is transient. Like your baby isn't going to be a baby forever. You're going to die one day. Like you, you can't be so attached to this role so attached where you think your whole spirit is forever mother no yes yes and and yeah I've found yeah and and you have a child and you become a mother and for a period of time I don't know a year two years three however like you know a lot of yourself is mother right like just because the child is so little but that doesn't mean that every other part of yourself has disappeared and you no longer have interests or yeah. want things outside of, you know, family. So I think what you said is so spot on. It's like staying connected. And that is also then, yeah, staying connected to yourself and knowing your worth and your power and all of that sort of stuff. But staying connected to those other parts of yourself is so key I think so like for anything even if you never have children you should have yes. interests you should have things and also don't, don't I mean it's like it's almost like an old Buddhist idea but like just don't get attached like have your passions let them be like extensions of your expression but like don't attach to anything too much I don't yeah. know give your everything but don't don't think those things are you. Don't get confused because things can come and go. Like even someone, you could be like a really successful banker or something or whatever, but like maybe one day you'll take a financial crash. And if you put all your attention on like your identity was this person who makes money, well, sometimes life circumstances happen in something. And if you think that, then you just died to yourself. But like yeah. you yeah. have to just like let, yeah, I don't know. And I think the role of mother is so giving. I think there's nothing else it, on the body, on the spiritual, on anything. I don't think there's anything more giving in the world that you could be. Like you could see it in nature, like, oh, wow, the clouds give water to the earth. But like you don't really see it in humanity more than being a mother that I think we forget because you give your all that it doesn't mean it's all who you are completely. No. And it's like you said, it's um, it's transient and it's a stage. You're always going to be a mother, even if that's something happens to the child, whatever, you know, like yeah. you always have to be a mother. Yeah, but the intensity of it and the need to identify with it, I guess, changes, you know, over time. So it just then becomes one part of who you are, I think. Yeah. 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 And then, you know, and you see, like, I have a lot of friends now who maybe they have a kid who's now five or something. And you can see this kind of like freedom open up in them a little bit, like around this age when the kid starts going to school or maybe they don't go to school, but they, they're, they're just more independent humans now, yes. you know, they can entertain themselves. Maybe they're learning how to read. They can go. And you see this like space kind of like open up in them. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I feel like you can like grieve and celebrate every, you know, because people are like, oh, they're not a baby anymore. But also let's also celebrate that they're not a baby anymore. Yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> totally. And it's, and it's so, so funny because I haven't been through any of this myself, but for some reason I, I just am around it all the time that I, I see it, you know? Yes. Yeah. And you're clearly like in tune, you know, kind of in tune with it and. Yeah. 
see what I guess these women are going through in a way. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I remember hearing, it sort of actually relates to kind of what we're talking about almost, but I remember hearing on your podcast, I think it was with a midwife, a Danish midwife. I can't remember her. Yeah, Tara. Yes. Tara Ron. And you, I can't remember the exact words, but you mentioned something about it was around like dogma and dogma within like, just in general but also like say within the natural birthing community this like no I believe in natural birth or you know no intervention so I'm not going to the doctor blah 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 blah. and I think that is that kind of thinking is apparent across the board and just at this moment in time it seems to be that there's this very black and white thinking and there's no room for like diversity of thought or if you disagree with someone, then that means, you know, we can't be friends, all of that sort of stuff. So, yeah, what do you, do you see that as well? And what do you think of that? And why do you think we're in this position? Yeah, this is like, this is like my favorite topic ever. And I, because all this stuff, all this women's work, all this stuff, it's almost like it almost doesn't even matter because I think even like more rooted in that for me is I'm really interested in humanity as a whole, as a consciousness, where we're going, how we think. I'm so much more interested in how people think than what they think. I don't, I actually think what people think almost doesn't matter because what, what you thought yesterday is different than what you thought today. It's transient, but how you think so, is actually something like, that's why I, I like when people have something that's different than me and challenges me or even triggers me a little bit, as long as how they're thinking is interesting to me. So I think w- the problem in, in this, you see this in the birth world too. It's a warlike way of thinking. If you think everything has a winner and a loser, but if we go into these spaces with a battle, you will get a battle. Yeah. I, I do have some battles internally that I'm trying to unbattle within, like some points of view, some things that really confuse my mind, but I, I, I'm aware of it enough. But like, I try to go into everything without a battle. Um, I might be passionate about something. I might really, you know, but... Yeah. So what you see in the birth world basically is, and actually I think this is a product of very uh, inverted masculinity that women have taken on. And I'm not, I don't, I don't associate masculinity with toxic masculinity. I associate everything has an inversion and like it's, it's whole true form. Whole true masculinity is beautiful and needed as much as whole true femininity is. I love them both, but they both have inverted versions of themselves. And I think some of the inverted feminine has also taken on the inverted like masculine as well. And that's this battle warlike mentality, this dogmatic idea, because you have a lot of women in the birth world who, <clears throat> and this is not, necessarily said outright but it's like okay if you had a home birth you won if you had a c-section you lost if you had you know like it's like this like if you had this it's like all based on these things but actually to me none of that matters it was like did you prepare did were you supported did you have the right people around you because the truth is this shit does happen but it does Mm -hmm. and like if you had the right people around no matter what the outcome was if they had to do anything intervention wise you those women are not going to be they know their power because they were like yeah and then I had the help in that moment that I needed and like something in nature got a little bit twisted and like I you know and Mm -hmm. so rather than like you had this, ex- like this thing, ha- like you had a C-section, you failed. That's not true. The only ones who are going to feel failure are the ones who feel like it didn't have to be that way. Yeah. And that's where that's, and I, my heart goes out to anyone who feels like maybe it didn't really have to end that way. And that's not their fault. Necess- like I, you don't place all the blame on that, but like, as opposed to something like a woman who went with a home birth and it ended up in a transfer and cesarean, but for good reason, you know, yes. like some, the heart rate was going weird. She had an infection, like whatever it might be. Yes. She's not, she was like, Oh, that was what I needed in that moment. Like, so I think it was like, did I prepare and did I have the support system? Because there's a very different, we can't control 
everything about life and nature. We can only control our like support system. So I think there's this kind of dogmatic view of like, this happened, that's bad. This happened, that's good. This happened. It's like, not really. We have to like look at the whole picture and everything. And I think, you know, coming back into this idea of, of like this dogma within um, society is like, how kind of, I guess the metaphor could be like, how well did a woman prepare and have the, the support around her? I can kind of think the metaphor for that could be like, how much did you actually, and I think that self-awareness kind of like could translate over in the birth world as like, sort of self-responsibility. Yeah. So I think people are just not self-aware. <laughs> like the less self-aware you are, the less you know how anything came to be. And the more self-aware you are, you can you can trace the steps back. You can learn from mistakes. You can do better next time, you know? Yeah. But same with like how we think, you know? Yeah. Like if you think that your opinion today, like, you know, how many times have you had an opinion that was different, you know, when you were – like what I thought when I was 16 about certain subjects is completely, completely different. Yeah. Than, but I thought it was the truth in that moment. I yeah. was like, oh, this is the truth. And everyone else thinks this. So I try to do that with whatever I think now. I'm like, okay, this makes sense. I have a little more awareness of how I came to this, but like, I'd like someone to challenge me. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And it also, it also, that kind of comes back to that attachment to, so then, because I've definitely been the same and it's something I still do and I'm very aware of it but can I can become very attached to I believe in this and my values are this and blah 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 and obviously that's important but like you said that can change so I think it's this really tricky balance of like maybe not attachment but your identity being um wound up in what you might believe at that time or as an example I I was vegan for five years and I had strong views about that and I identified very much with that. And it was a way for me to be like, oh, I'm vegan, so these are my values, but I'm not anymore. And I, when, that, when I started eating a bit of meat again, I really was like, oh, that's like, but I had identified so much with being vegan. So you know what I mean? So it's also like just coming back to the dogma also is like, removing the identity to what you believe in in the sense of I believe in home birth or I don't believe in home birth and just coming back to yourself and that moment and trust in yourself and the situation and you know what I mean yes I think that but that's the thing I think if we're ever faced with a moral dilemma or a spiritual dilemma or anything like life is giving us a very challenging circumstance you there's no rule book like, I think this is where religion is, like, really wrong. It's, like, the commandments and you have to follow this and that. But, like, there's some circumstances where lying, like, I, I hate lying, but maybe there's a circumstance where actually lying would save someone's life. So I would lie in that situation. Do you know what I mean? So we can't yeah. go, this is bad, always. And yes. it's, like, everything in its right place. Yeah. Like, you know, like a knife out of place is scary. A knife in the kitchen is great. Mm. So it's like, we have to understand that. And you can really only know things in the moment. You can really only know what to do in the moment. But also what you said of being, I actually think it's really important to have strong convictions too. Yes. So I think it's also... But that's, 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 that's different, I think, a little bit. That's also, I think, like... That's where it comes back to knowing, not knowing yourself, but like, like a deep trust in yourself, right? Whatever the topic is, but it's like, yeah, it's it, it's this deep trust in yourself and knowing what is right in that moment, and that will change depending on the moment, it, it, or the situation, or. It might be, but like it might not change, but it's this coming back to yourself. Does, does that make sense? I can't explain it. Like, yeah, yeah. It's like being in the moment too, understanding, like coming back to yourself in this very moment because you change moment by moment and like circumstances changes. Yeah. And, and yeah. also, I think if, if you think something is 
there's an ultimate truth of like, this thing is right. And this thing is wrong. Whenever you make something right yes. in an ultimate way, you make something else wrong in an ultimate yeah. way. And that's like so dualistic. It's You're never going to move forward in that way of thinking. I just yeah. say everything in its right place. Yeah. Yes. And it's like tuning into yourself or knowing yourself in every moment. Not, but, you know, to know then what that outcome is rather than, oh, I identify as X, so that means my answer to this question is X, rather than, oh, what do I think and feel, rather yeah. than is the, you know, it's like if you're, whatever, Democrat or Republican, yeah, just subscribe to, you know, whatever party's policies rather than, oh, maybe I think about X policy, I agree with X policy as an example, from that party but this one from the other party you know it's like coming back to yourself rather than then externalizing or looking for external parties to tell you what you think or feel yeah exactly exactly so I just try to challenge people I'm like how how are you coming to this thinking because mm-hmm. people will say something but they have no idea it's just because they heard it somewhere else yeah like, I think they're like I'm like, but that doesn't make it true. They're like, this is misinformation. I'm like, according to who? According to a little like note you got at the bottom of a screen somewhere. And then you're like, uh, just assume like that makes no sense. Yes. And that in it, both, I hate using this, but both sides for lack of Yeah, people. of course. Yeah. It just, just, yeah, I love the how we think because it's, it's not what we think, but how and why. Like that is such an important distinction. A great debate is two people with two complete. I love people with different opinions. I like when people come with me from a, a different angle, but as long as they're like how they're, I'm like, oh yeah, because then they can really challenge me. And I think I really have no idea, but I would think that even two people who have like the opposite um, opinion, so say use birthing as an example, someone who's like, no, you go to hospital, you know, you have an obstetrician, xyz and someone who's like no you birth at home you have a midwife you have a daughter that's it whatever nine times out of ten i would say the reason that those people have made those decisions is the same it's because they want the best for their child Mm -hmm. they want the best for the mother you know like yeah totally foundation of the decision making is often similar it's just coming out the output is different right right exactly and it's like, I think like one, you know, I obviously I believe in a woman's right to choose over her body. Like, but there's some people who really believe life starts there. They really believe it. Like, and if I believed that I would have the same, and I, I do believe it in a way. I actually don't think they're wrong. I just wouldn't legislate that. But anyways, yeah. that's like a different question, but like they really like, will see it as murder. Like they really see it. So I understand why they feel very emotional. I'm not saying it's right. I, I feel very strong, but it's like, I can, I, I can still can hear where people are coming from when they feel really strongly about it, you know, yeah. without saying that that's the right decision to make, but just being like, okay, I hear you, yes. you know, yeah. how do we, we have to like really hear each other. Well, yeah. And at least have the conversation about both sides. Yeah. Probably. Again, if someone who was like a woman doesn't have a right to choose, birth happens, you know, sorry, life happens, you know, the second, and then the woman's like, oh, no, but, the, or, if yeah, the other side's like, no, but then the baby, I can't look after, it's going to grow up in a shit environment, blah, blah. But hearing actually why people believe that, they're probably going to come to an understanding of like, oh, I see where you're coming from rather than just blocking it out and never having the conversation because then no one talks about it. So no progress is made. No, no, no progress at all. But I think my idea of like a perfect utopia, I think we're maybe coming to it a little bit with the podcast world, but the podcast is more people conversing. I want people coming. Like, I think we should have like public discourse where like the public gets to see it. It's either like televised on every subject ever. And two people who have really come from really different angles, but really have a lot of knowledge and a lot of stuff. They should just debate. And then people will come 
then that's like, isn't that the only way we kind of figure out? Like, I would just want that. And rather than like canceling someone because we find it offense, like I want the pro lifers to be up on. The, I like, I want to hear what they have, even though I really don't think. Like, I really feel very strongly about, like, a woman's right to choose. Like, I, especially on a legislative level, you can do whatever you want personally. But it's like, I, we need to hear, we need to have those two people talking. Yes. So that people can, so, just so people can understand the other person. Yeah. Well, it also, rather than just, like, blocking it. It also then means that people, like, seen as humans rather than, like, your ex. You know, like, yeah. Yeah, literally. That, whatever that phrase is. You know, it's so again, like, regardless of what you believe, like, I agree, I, a woman has the right to choose 100%. Yeah. But everyone is still a human who can have an opinion. And by just shutting it down, yeah, I just feel like the shutting down and the cancelling just completely halts progress. Because then everyone doubles down on what they believe. Exactly. Their feet in the sand. And so there's no movement, you know? Yeah. And also just like in a court of law, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. mentioned this and was brilliant because he's a lawyer. He was like, when I, when he like cleaned up the water or whatever, I don't remember, some big case, some big legislative case. He was like, we had experts on both sides from like the same, you know, for he had, we had expert scientists, expert whatever on both sides, and that's how the judge comes to a conclusion. You don't just – like, that's how we make decisions, it, at least on, like, a legislative level. Why would we not do that in every other aspect of our lives? Yes. Yeah. You know? Yes. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm well up for, I love when people, I love a debate. I had like a three hour debate with one of my best friends from New York, actually, like, honestly about the trans issue. And there were so many places where we saw eye to eye and there were so many places where we were challenged, but I loved it. Like we just hugged it out at the end because we were coming from different, but there was still like, I'd say like 70% we could see eye to eye, but they were really strong. That 30% was really different, you know, and it was like a hard no on both our ends, but it was also interesting to like be able to defend defend why we come to that conclusion yes you know and that doesn't break then the relationship like you can no I actually like love her more now yeah. you know it's like yes. I'm like oh this is great because we we're able and I actually you know I think this is sort of a feminine I think there's something in the feminine power who knows how to listen and be quiet too and that's actually powerful kind of like I'm not saying be quiet like repressed quiet but she knows how to speak when it's time to speak and knows how to listen when it's time to listen like think about a mother who has to listen to her child after like her child just like hit her or something you know in a rage or something and she has to be able to like sit down and listen like I think this is like a feminine quality that we can all as a society like canceling is not very I think feminine listens to everybody because she wants to help everyone sort of yes Yes. So we can't, yeah, I think we, that's also like if women are coming into their power, maybe we're the ones to to begin those. Maybe men have been doing the debates too long and we need more. We don't always need to come at it from like a a masculine place. We can have like our round table discussion with a group of lots of different individuals. Yes. From different yeah, background. You don't have to see it as a battle. Like a debate battle. for me is working out. It's like going to the gym rather than going to like a war zone. Yes. I mean, it's going to the gym. It's good. That's how you figure out why you think the way you think is when someone's challenging you and you have to defend it. Yes. Or realize where it has holes. You're like, shit, I can't defend this part. Damn, you got me. Like, yeah. I'm going to have to think about that. Give me, like, yes. I'll try to it's think about win- it, you know? Yeah. And it's not a winner or loser it's purely a discussion to that's the thing right it's a discuss it should the the mentality of it say a debate or whatever should be a discussion so we can get to an outcome that benefits the most amount of people rather than i'm doing this debate so i can be the winner how boring and it's, then that benefits no one except the person who's won the debate how boring <laughs> i mean i think there can be people who are stronger in the debate and showing the weak oh. holes on the other side. But that doesn't mean that that opinion has no, it's that maybe that person is shoddy in their opinion and needs to 
needs well, to figure out needs to men either mend it or shift it. And yeah. like, so I definitely think there can be like a, it's not like a winner loser, but like there's somebody who co- can come out stronger in the debate because that, and that usually is just because they've put more thought into how they've come to that conclusion, not necessarily because they're right. Yes. Yeah. They've just happened to put more thought into it. And that's a good thing for the other person. Cause now they need to put more thought into why they think. Exactly. And like investigate why they, yeah. Why they think we need to have like a pot a debate podcast, I feel like, of every subject ever. Yeah. It would be so interesting yeah. to have like people who like respond. I would I would love it. I would listen to it all the time. And it then makes it okay to like have those conversations and disagree and come at things from different angles because it does feel like now it's like there's just a little room for yeah. Difference. I feel like humanity is like toddlers, right? Like we're literally, it's some people are adolescent and a bit older and then we're, they're talking to toddlers. Like I'd say a majority of humanity is like toddlers, but it's growing that they're getting old. Some <laughs> section of them, there's like, yeah, it's very interesting. Cause like a toddler would just go, no, yeah. because I said so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you don't ask questions, you probably don't have many answers. If you do ask questions, you might have answers and people might have very different answers, but at least you're asking a question Question. kind of. Yeah, exactly. Totally. Totally. So I think, yeah, 2020 onward kind of shifted humanity. Big time. And yeah, Yeah. what you said about the toddler thing, it's like, it's, we're just in a necessary stage to then get to the next growth or yeah, like yeah, kids have to go through stages to then get to, you know, adulthood and all of these things. So this is like this time of like the um, polarization and the black and white and the like finger pointing and cancelling. It's like a necessary step, I think, for us all to kind of then eventually come back together. Yeah, it's hard to imagine everyone do it. But yeah, maybe for some people, they, they're late bloomers. I don't know. <laughs> but I do see like more and more people are really kind of growing into their own adolescence of spiritually, mentally, whatever it might be. Yeah. Um, and I think that also comes back to like this women's work, birth work stuff is like you for so, so home birth was the norm for like millennia, let's say, <laughs> it's like, what else are you going to do? Like, it's just like, you just yeah. give birth, right? Okay, but then I'd say the last two or three generations in the Western world, we made it that the hospital is the norm. And by the way, in some countries who have low access to like good hygiene and nutrition, that is a luxury. I think we forget that it's also a luxury. It's a luxury used out of place often Mm -hmm. and therefore gives out of place results. But like there's a lot of women who are like malnourished in other countries who'd have to walk like 20 miles to get to and they can die sometimes not because birth is dangerous but maybe they're malnourished they don't have the right vitamins the blood is not healthy whatever it might be and they it would be great to have it so we also need to be also a little i find i'm like we also have to be grateful a little bit for where we live and how much choice we have you know like I think we forget that birth is not the same in every culture In a lot of places they think what we have, it's almost like we're like, it's like a kid who has like a buffet and we're like, eh. you know, like, I think we also have to remember like hospital and it's right. I'm so grateful that it's there and yeah. that I can use and that it, there's well-trained facility, you know, thank yeah. God. I'm so yeah. happy about that. Like, yeah. great. So like, I'm not anti that place because it's good that it exists. It's just used out of place. And yeah. so like, um, but we have to, we have, you know, we can't keep going. The last two generations just went to the hospital because that's where you go. And I didn't really think much about it. And I just assumed that the doctor's always going to do what's right. And I didn't learn about birth because I just let them take care of it. Like, we can't have that mentality anymore. And that's still a big mentality. Unless somebody has a traumatic experience and then wakes up for the, but why do we need to go into it being like, I have the best doctors in the world and I don't really need to think about it because they're just going to make sure that everything's okay. That's not true. They're not giving birth. They're not going to be, they can't make choices for you. They're not going to push your baby out. Like, so we need to stop going through life in general with our opinions, with our choices, with our lifestyle. I just didn't think about it. Like, this is just what you do. 
I think everything you need to be like, why am I doing this? You know, and so we need to do that with birth as well as women, as individuals. And I think the way that we can help that is just starting the conversation young and making the conversation normal amongst men, too. There's yeah. places where they should be included in it, too. They should not be fearing birth either. So I guess that's where I would see kind of the, the more community work come in. Yeah. But I don't know. You've probably heard this phrase. I can't remember who I heard it from. I think it was on a podcast with a midwife. And she said, peace begins at birth. And I think peace, peace, yeah, like peace begins at birth. And I think what you just said, like, summarizes that thought and why that's the case. You know, it's like it comes back to the individual and what you said before about how we think and why. And once we get to that place, that's where everything can kind of like, level out and everyone is just themselves and feels worth in that and then the need for all the other like craziness just kind of can disappear exactly and we we can't also we sh we can't go around the world pointing fingers and judging people either women or anyone because sometimes someone will tell me oh i really want to give birth naturally and i'm like when i'm hearing you it sounds like you want to have a home birth is that something that you've considered do you know? And sometimes they'll be like, no, 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 no. And it's like, okay, they have something, they have some belief there that's probably not theirs that they've come to. And that's okay. They don't have to necessarily work. We can work around it. Or like, let's challenge that a little bit. Not because I think that they should have a home birth, but I want to make sure that they're coming to the decision that's theirs and not something that they absorbed because it's sounding like this. And then it has this conflict based on this thing that they've, so let's either make that true or make that true and like find a way yes. without like judgment or anything yes and just being like why do you because also there's some women who like they just can't get past whatever the fear that they've absorbed in in um society or it feels like to or, or like they they're afraid of making too much noise with their neighbors whatever it might be and that might be a priority for them they don't want to bother their neighbors and like that's fine and then i'm like okay great then you can do this too like yeah. there's no it doesn't they, they didn't win or lose you don't have to give birth you just have to know what you're up against if you leave home too like just know what you're coming up against for both yes. and then weigh out the options and make the decision from there yeah. like it's quite it's actually quite simple but I think we also have to do this with our beliefs and our opinions. Yeah, it can be not simple, but it also can be so simple when you just strip everything else away, you know? Yeah. And, I mean, I love – because we did the childbirth ed together, and I love your story too because, like um, – it's just great. It's just a story of like, this will happen wherever it wants to. Like, this is so natural that like, you can't even stop it sometimes yeah. wherever you are. Cause I just went to a birth that was an accidental home birth. Like she's not trying to give birth at home, but it was so, it was like 45 minutes. Oh, wow. I was like, yeah. And her, you know, and that was just where it needed to happen. And it was yeah. fine. Thank you so much for listening. And I really hope you enjoyed that conversation. We kind of went in a lot of directions. Um, I think we co covered some, yeah, interesting ground and that there's some food for thought in there. So, yeah, check out Felicia's info in the show notes. If you liked it, please subscribe, share it with a friend. Um, and also you can start following the podcast on Instagram, which I will link in the show notes as well. 